In this episode, we're bolting on our accessories and opening up this magical box. Let's go. In our last episode, we took on a host of jobs with the goal of buttoning up our made-over Junkyard 5.3 to get it ready for its first meeting with the Tacoma's engine bay. Now we can take what we learned from that first test fit, address the issues, and move forward. Let's get to work. Last time, we called an audible and made the necessary switch from a rear sump to a front sump oil pan. The fit on this one was great, so it's time to get it ready to install. Before we can install this oil pan for good, I need to find a home for our turbo oil drain. Now I've got a good space in mind and this pan actually has a couple options. Let's take a look. So what this pan offers are two dipstick locations. Here's one on the passenger side and then there's one over here on the driver's side. So this location here on the driver's side, I think this will be perfect for our threaded in dipstick that we'll set up later. Now here on the passenger side, I think this will be ideal for our turbo drain because the turbo is going to be located on the passenger side of the engine compartment. Now we do have a couple things in the way. We've got our engine mount here and the AC compressor which is going to sit here, but we should be able to sneak it right behind the AC compressor in this other dipstick spot. So I've got this steel weldable 10AN fitting and my goal is to just get that guy right on there. Now currently, it's not sitting on there very well. So what I think I'm going to do is drill out this fitting just a tiny bit and it'll plug down on there and that'll give us some good flange to weld on. Now you're probably wondering about this here. This seems like a perfect spot for an oil drain. It's big, it's down low. This is actually for the LS oil level sensor. So this is actually in the oil level and draining your oil into the oil level would cause a variety of issues. So unfortunately, as nice as this is and it's a big old spot and perfect size, um, it does not work for an oil drain. So we'll plug that up later. So I don't mar the finish on any of my AN fittings. I'm using these Earl's aluminum vice jaws and also this Summit Racing adjustable AN wrench. All right, that turned out good. Just took a little bit out of there. This will give us lots of options for our oil drain. You know, we could put a straight fitting on here and I think that'll clear the compressor. We might do a 45 or something like that. Hard to tell, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. During our last engine test fit, I did a bunch of measuring and unfortunately that steering rack wants no part of an oil filter in its neighborhood. To work around this, I picked up this remote oil filter adapter from Canton Racing. It's made to work with this oil pan and features a big 12AN inlet and outlet. I also picked up these fittings from Canton, which are made to work with the adapter and includes O-rings for a good seal. I won't be making and routing the remote oil filter lines for a while, so I'm going to cap these off for now. Next, since we're not using the oil level sensor, I'm using this plug that Canton makes to seal it up. Now off comes the pan so we can install the oil pickup, windage tray, and pan gasket. These are the parts that Canton Racing recommends that you use with this particular pan. The only difference is we need to use the oil pickup o-ring that came with our new oil pump not the blue one here that came pre-installed on our GM oil pickup. That all looks good. Now let's weld up our turbo oil drain fitting. I 
After letting that cool down, we can install the oil pan for good. There we go, we're getting closer. I tell you, getting this oil pan figured out felt like a big win. After that first test fit, I was afraid it would require a custom made pan of some sort, which would have been a big project in itself. Now it's time to sort out our engine accessories. The great thing about the LS engine family is the huge selection of accessory drive options. That said, having so many options can be a little overwhelming too, especially when it comes to an engine swap project. Based on the engine position and measurements of our last test fit, I decided to use a modified version of the 5.3's truck accessory drive setup. So here's everything we're going to use. Hey everyone, I hate to interrupt this video, but I'm from the future and bring you a very important message. Yeah, this is how we dress in the future, but that's not important right now. While the accessory drive setup I installed here was really nice and would work for many LS swaps, it didn't provide quite enough room for the radiator and fan setup in the Tacoma, so I had to make some changes to it. As you'll see in part 7, I used a lower profile CTSV water pump, an F-body damper pulley, and revised F-body spacing for the power steering pump and alternator. Okay, I need to go back to the future. Hey, that's kind of catchy. Back to the future. Anywho, live long and prosper. First up is this F-body water pump and these spacers which are necessary to get the belt position lined up with the truck engine's crank pulley. This kit worked well and included longer bolts and all the gaskets needed. The F-body pump is good for our setup due to the position of the water inlet and outlet. With that torque down, now we move on to the power steering pump. Unfortunately, the stock truck high mount alternator and low mounted power steering setup was a no-go in our Tacoma, so I'm using this power steering bracket kit from LSX Innovations. This places the power steering pump in the same position as you'd find in an F-body, but with the truck spacing that we need. The kit requires the use of this style power steering pump, which is a factory replacement for LS-powered F-bodies. Next up is the alternator, which is mounted low on the driver's side of the engine. In order to make this happen, we need to create a new threaded hole in the block, so I used this kit and it worked perfectly. I chose this AC Delco alternator, which is a stock replacement for LSF bodies. To mount it up properly, I'm using this low mount alternator bracket also from LSX Innovations. Next, I'm reusing the stock 5.3 truck AC mounting bracket and a stock replacement Delphi AC compressor. We'll adapt this to our Toyota AC bits in the future. I also added a new AC Delco tensioner and installed the belt. Next is this belt tensioner that mounts up here on the water pump housing. I really like how this accessory drive came together. Happy with that. I hope it all fits. We will see shortly. And I'm not going to install this power steering pump pulley that goes right here, because once you press it on, you have to have a remover to pull it off. And I just want to see if all this will go in the truck. And if it all looks good, then we'll throw this guy on. So there we go, a simple, reliable accessory drive solution that should work great for us. Another item that will test fit in the Tacoma's engine bay is this stock replacement AC Delco starter. Let's bolt it up. Now our engine is almost fully dressed for the next test fit. We just need one important item to complete the package. This
This is the B&M Street & Strip 4L80E 4-speed automatic transmission. This transmission is a complete ready-to-run unit and is designed for high-performance street and mild strip use, which will be perfect for our needs. It's loaded with stout parts and is rated to 800 horsepower and 650 foot-pounds of torque. For complete specs, check out summitracing.com and the B&M website. Ooh wee, this thing is sweet! We've got a couple of jobs to do before we can bolt this beast up to our engine, so let's get to it. First up, we need to install our flex plate. Instead of reusing our old bolts or picking up some stock replacements, I chose to upgrade with these flex plate bolts from ARP. With our flex plate torqued down, let's take a look at the next piece of the puzzle. This is the FTI Performance SRL Series Billet Lockup Torque Converter. It features a computer-designed CNC machined billet front cover and a billet lockup piston with furnace brazed and hella welded fins, severe duty sprag, and anti-ballooning impeller hub. These torque converters are super strong and FTI stands behind them with a three-year warranty. I was impressed with the quality of this piece, the detailed documentation included, and the friendly support I received when I called FTI with a couple of questions. The first step is to fill it with a quart of transmission fluid, so let's do it. Now it's time to install it onto our transmission following the instructions that FTI included. I heard three distinct clicks that they described, but made a couple measurements to double check that the converter was fully seated. That looks good right there. That checked out, so now I'm putting on this crankshaft adapter which properly mates the converter to our LS crank. Next, I'm installing these transmission cooler fittings which convert from the stock threaded size to a 6AN male fitting. I won't be using these for a while, so we'll cap them off. Next, I picked up this polyurethane transmission mount from Energy Suspension. I'm not 100% sure if this will work in our swap Tacoma, but I'm going to test it out. Okay, it's time to join this engine and transmission for our next round of test fitting. Okay, the mating of the engine and transmission. Coming along great so far. Use this same tip from LS1 Tech that I used on Thunderbolt, and that is to get a long bolt, cut the head off, put a slot in there so you can put a flathead screwdriver on it. You screw it in, use it as a guide pin, and that's been really handy, doing that on both sides. It's really helpful, and it's actually a good visual guide too to help line everything up. Okay, nice and even. Oh, there we go. Look at that. Converter spins good. Got another measurement to do there to make sure the converter is seated properly. I wanted some good strong bolts to connect our engine and transmission, so I picked these up from ARP. Oh man, look at all this. I'm getting pretty psyched now. Oh, quick thing. During our last test fit, I threw on the stock truck intake, and as I expected, it was way too tall and would have stuck up through the hood, especially with the throttle body and intake piping in place. To avoid this and keep that stock sleeper hood line that I want, I picked up this used LS6 intake. Oh yeah, that'll tuck under the hood nicely. So just for fun, let's take a side-by-side -side look at the stock Toyota 4-cylinder automatic and our GM V8 4L80E combo. I lined them up even at the front crank pulley to try and get a good comparison here. Okay, a couple little jobs before our engine and trans test fit. First, I gotta remove the stock shifter since it hangs down in the way of the transmission tunnel. Come on. Come on. There we go. 
Okay, one more little job to go. Since we are using a front sump oil pan, we obviously can't run this dipstick here anymore. So I needed something to block this off. I just had this plastic plug in here. So I start, did some searching online and found this little guy. It's a little freeze plug that the factory GTO came with since the GTO used sort of a front mid sump oil pan. So we just need to plug this little guy in there. Take off you hoser. Okay, I think I got it. There we go, time to test fit. Here's where we're at at the moment. Pretty happy with the placement so far. One thing that's a challenge is this transmission cross member is not removable. Welded to the frame, so we might have to modify that. Although the mount is sort of approaching it. I don't know, we'll see what happens there. So the transmission is clearing so far. We've still got a ways to go back. Happy with the progress, lots of things in the way. Learning lots as I go here. Here's the current view from up top. We're a good ways off the motor mounts. I'm just going really slow to make sure I don't damage anything and to just watch all my little clearance points as I go. Quick update on our first test fit of the engine and transmission. Actually, I'm really happy with how this is going so far. It is hitting in some places and I'll show you those shortly, but it's all to be expected and it's actually fitting much better than I thought it would. So let me show you what we got going on. All right, check this out. So the engine is sitting on the mounts right now, but it needs to be slid back probably an eighth of an inch or something. So one point I have that's hitting, real common spot with these swaps, is the passenger side head on the firewall. That's not a big deal there. But everything else looks pretty good. Our accessory drive seems to be clearing. Of course, we already tested the oil pan. It looks good. One area of the oil pan I was a little unsure of is right down there. So those are our remote oil filter lines. Pretty tight down there. Might have to come up with some kind of creative solution for that, but it does clear. All right, let's go underneath. Okay, it's a little cramped under here. I'll try to give you a good idea of what's going on. So the bell housing of the transmission is touching this area of the firewall and tunnel here. And these aren't really major, they just need clearance a little, and I think we'll be fine. We got the same thing going on on the other side too, but on the other side, one of the transmission cooler lines is right up against the transmission tunnel. So I'm gonna have to come up with something creative for that too. So here's a look at the transmission rear mount. So it's actually very close. I think we might be able to make some sort of an extension on this piece and get that to fit. Okay, so pretty good overall, but there are a few spots we need to work on. So this whole thing has to come back out, but we gotta get this thing out of here so we can clearance those areas and do our second test fit. Let's go. So with the engine and transmission out of the way, I got my sledgehammer and did a little careful clearancing. In all seriousness, it needed a few little taps here and there, but surprisingly very little work overall. Nothing like my LS3 Miata, which needed cut, reshaped, and rewelded in that firewall and tunnel area. With the engine back in and the extra clearance available, the engine can slide all the way back on its mounts where it's supposed to be. How do you like my luxurious garage carpet? It's so plush. Everything's fitting really good under here. This jack actually doesn't even have any pressure on the transmission. If we move up here, you can see the transmission is sitting on the cross member. I don't have that mount screwed in at the moment, but it is 
plop down on that stock Toyota Crossmember. So the good news is, is I think we'll be able to do something with that. That all looks great under there. Let's see how the LS6 intake is gonna fit under here. Oh, that looks so cool. And best of all, the low profile design will allow it to fit under the hood. So we've got lots of room over here on the passenger side, but on the driver's side, we're a little more compromised. We've got those oil filter fittings where we'll have a remote oil filter. We've got all the steering rack lines, but that steering shaft is the real buzzkill here. That thing is just smack dab in the middle of where any sort of exhaust wants to be. I have to figure out something for that. We made excellent progress today, but discovered some problems that we'll need to solve soon. It's all part of the process, and I appreciate you all coming along with me. Thank you for watching, and thank you to Summit Racing for making this video series possible. No matter what you're building, be sure to visit summitracing.com or download their handy app for all of your parts, supplies, tools, and so much more. They also have tons of tech info at onallcylinders.com, so be sure to check that out too. Also, don't forget to come hang out with me at any of these spots. I'd love to hear from you. In the next episode, we're diving deeper into our drivetrain conversion by tackling a bunch of important jobs. So with that said, thanks again, folks. We'll see you next time.